to the class. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> chapter six today we are going to start, and I haven't posted the notes yet, but that is Grassmann algebra. And Grassmann algebra is something that we are not going to use directly too much. It's just one of the legs of, of the Clifford algebra that we will use. But uh, I have been thinking about it, and it's a really interesting algebra. So I was planning to do just one lecture, but maybe we will do two lectures in Grassmann algebra. And that is chapter six of the notes, as they were organized uh, at the last, uh, my last review last semester. So I think we will overhaul this, this chapter, and we will do one more lecture. But this is a, this is a really cool algebra, Grassmann algebra. Um, we reviewed last day what the vector spaces were, remember? With vector space, vector space, space. And we talked about inner products in the vector space, which was a metric space, right? Or Euclidean space. Space. And uh, in case you don't remember, there is the definition of vector space, matrix space. It's you can find it again in chapter six. So if you don't remember, you can review that. That's the very beginning of it. And then we said there is another structure which has uh, some more properties, properties which is an algebra. And an algebra was nothing but a vector space with another operation to multiply the elements of the vector space, right? Vector space, space, with a second operation, a second operation. with a second operation. So in this case, because you can give it any symbol, but because we are in the uh, Grassmann algebra chapter, we are going to give it this funny name. So this is going to be our operation, and you can call it wedge product or outer product, you know, and it goes from your space. Uh, vector spaces, just call it L. It's a binary operation, it takes two elements of your vector space and it gives you another element in your vector space. So let's call them A and B, you take a pair and then you send that to A wedge B. In addition, this is the second, the first one of course is the addition, the vector addition. Hello. Okay, and this operation, I have to look at what properties it has. Of course, it has to be closed, which means you operate two vectors, you end up with a vector. It's associative. Which means if you have three, associative means A wedge B wedge C will be equal to A wedge B wedge C. Okay, so you can just forget the, the parentheses and you know group them however you want without changing the order. It's close associative and it's bilinear. Okay, so that means you have a, a field of scalars k1 a plus k2 b which c and imagine you will have the same in the other side it's bilinear so it's linear in this side linear in the other but now you can distribute in this side so you will have k1 a k1 a which c plus k2 b b which c and you know, you, we will have a, if we have also a linear combination in C, then you will have a long list of several terms here. Okay, so you can di you can uh, <laughs> distribute over each of the terms. It's bilinear. Okay. 
So this is our extra operation, and that creates an algebra, and of course depends on how you define your vector space, your underlying vector space, and how you define your, your second operation, you will have different algebras. The one we are going to study today, it's called Grassmann algebra. Oh, I cannot erase yet. <laughs> I need to save, oh no, I need to move down. Yeah, That's what I, extend page. Yeah, I, I forgot, it has been a while. Okay, <coughs> so let me put this up a little bit. So we are going to talk about a particular type of algebra which is called Grassmann algebra. And I have to keep looking because I, fo I forget how my notes are organized. That doesn't look very good in the video, but anyway. Uh, so of course this was invented by Grassman, who you have the dates and even you have even the picture here in the notes so that you know how the guy looks. <laughs> and that was in the 1800s and um, uh, what it allows you, the Grassmann algebra, what it allows is starting with a vector space, you can create a different set of vectors using this operation that covers all possible subspaces of your vector space. And those are all elements of your algebra. Okay. So it's an algebra. 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 Whose elements are are uh, what we call multi-vectors. Multi-vectors formed by by uh, formed by uh, linear combinations of subspaces. So the idea in this case was to be able to have all your geometry all, uh, in, in our Euclidean 3D space, so to have all our geometry with an algebra structure. So you can operate things, for instance, you can operate, you can have lines as your elements of your geometry, you can have planes, you can have volumes, and you can operate with those algebraically. You can multiply two lines and get something that makes sense geometrically. Okay? So this is the idea of the Grassmann algebra. So for that, we can define the, the, this wedge operation, in particular for this case. So let us see what kind of space we have and what kind of uh, operator we have. So we are going to call the space that we will be based on to, to generate all these elements is, con is called the underlying vector space. And we call it underlying because we are going to extend it. So the elements of our algebra are going to be the elements of the vector space and something else. Yeah. Underlying vector space space is going to be Rn. So in general, the n-dimensional uh, our n-dimensional real space, and then the outer product or wedge product. The other operation of, of the algebra will be just the vector addition. Okay. And then we'll have, of course, the multiplication times scalar and all that. The wedge product, and I have to look at the properties, is anti symmetric. So A wedge B. In general, we know it's not commutative. In this case, there is some structure when you commute and the structure is that it becomes the negative. So this is an extra property to a most general type of product that you could define, which didn't have to have this property, right? And then the rest, associative, distributive. <coughs> distributive or bilinear, so these are just the general
and then we have a unit. Which will be one which a equal a which one equal a. But let's start with an easy or a case that we are familiar one with, and that will be example R three. Our vector space in three dimensions and in this case we are not going to use the metric so it's not our Euclidean space it could have a metric or not but we are not going to use it within the Grassmann algebra at this point so just your pure vector space R3 this will be our underlying vector space okay I think it writes better than last year right or maybe I'm becoming better at, at this vector space So what is the basis of R3? How many vectors do we have in the base? It's a vector space so we can find a basis so that every vector is a linear combination of those elements in the base, right? In the basis. Three vectors, right? Let me call them, uh, let me call them as I have them called here, which I don't remember. Uh, E1, E2, E3, yeah. E1, E2, E3, yes. You can take any three vectors which are linearly independent and with those three you can generate any other vector. Those are our choice. Alright? Okay. So now let's operate them, see what happens. So our underlying vector space has a basis which has three, so it has dimension three. Dimension equal number of vectors of the basis, right? Now let's see what happens when we apply this operator to it. Okay? Let's just say E1 wedge E1. Oh, well, it's hard to say what it is, no? Well, this is equal to minus E1 wedge E1 because of this. That means that this has to be zero. There is no other number that will give you that. So yes, uh, funny things start already. So you do the wedge product of a uh, vector times itself you get zero this is always the case whatever vector you have uh, let's just do e1 wedge e2 well we get e1 wedge e2 it's nothing nothing else that's a new that's a new thing okay the only thing that we can say is that this is equal to minus e2 wedge e1, but you know, it's a new element, okay? This page is becoming too long. Uh, okay. e1 wedge e3. That will be another different element. And then we have e2 wedge e3. And then we can operate them, all of them, so we can do E1, wedge, E2, wedge, E3. And that will be another thing. Okay. And that's all, because if we keep adding vectors, and of course you can associate this however you want, remember? If you keep adding vectors, for example, if you do E1, wedge, E2, wedge, E3, wedge, E1, then you can say that this is equal to minus E1 wedge E2 wedge E1 wedge E3. We have associated these two and switched them. And this will be equal to E1 wedge E1 wedge E2 wedge E3. And then E1 wedge E1 is going to be zero. So as, as, as soon as you try to multiply or do the wedge product or more than the three elements, that one of them is repeated, you are going to get zero. Okay? I put a new page. Uh, you guys need to see this again? Oh, sorry. 
sorry. Are you, is anybody still copying this? No? Okay. All right. And then we know that we can obtain any vector as a linear combination of the bases, so we can do the same thing for a general vector. For a general vector, we have a is equal to k1, e1, or let me just call it a1, e1. The components will be a1, a2, a3, a1. These are scalars, these are vectors. A2, E2, plus A3, E3. And then we have B, B1, E1, plus B2, E2, plus B3, E3. Now we can do the wedge product of these two. A wedge B, and this is just is distributive and bilinear, so we can do all the distribution, right? A1, E1, A2, E2, plus A3, E3, which B1, E1, plus B2, E2, plus B3, E3, okay. And now we have to do all the terms, so A1, B1, E1, which E1, that's zero. A1, B2, A1, which A2, so A1, B2, E1, which E2, plus A1, E2, A1, B3, B3, A1, which E3. Okay, this is all for this one, now this one, plus A2, B1, A2, which E2. E2 which E1, then this one with this one will be 0, and then A2, B3, A, E2 which E3, plus third one, A3, B1, E3 which E1, which plus 3 by 2, A3, B2, E3 which E2, and the rest is 0. Okay, and now we can collect. So we are going to collect the ones that have the same wedge. And this one is the same as this one with the opposite sign, okay? So this will be A1, B2, minus A2, B1, E1, wedge E2, plus the ones with E2, E3, so that will be this one, and this one, A2, B3, minus A3, B2, E2, which E3. And then the last one, and that is E1, E3. A1, B3, minus A3, B1, E1, which E3. Actually, well, that's fine. We can always choose whatever representative. Hmm. So what is this? This should fa sound familiar to you guys. What are these coefficients? Do you, what do they remind you of? Yeah. They? Cross product? Cross product. Oh. So somehow we are when we do the wedge product of two vectors, we are kind of getting kind of cross product, but we can look at it from a geometric point of view. Let me show you that. So this is what you get. You do the wedge of two vectors, if you obtain this, you can do the wedge product of three vectors and you will obtain something that will will be familiar to. But let me let me show you the geometric interpretation of this. <coughs> so geometric interpretation first we have our vectors right so let me just put our underlying vector space x y and z or one two three that's okay we don't need to do that. 
stop it. Okay, so we have our vector E1, E1, our vector E2, and our vector E3, and we use those to define directions, right? Any direction, it's a linear combination of those, right? Then we have, so this, these are E1, E2, and E3. Okay. Then we have E1 wedge E2. E1 wedge E2, E1 wedge E3, E2 wedge E3. Okay. So this is what they are. E1 wedge E2 is actually this element of area. Okay. This is like your basis area element. This is A1 wedge E2. And it's oriented. So it goes from 1 to 2. Right? If you change the orientation, then you get the minus, which is E2 wedge E1. Okay? So this one over here is like your basis for one of your basis elements for planes, okay? For areas. And then we have E1 wedge E3, which you know is, that will be this unit plane. This one is E1 wedge E3. And then we have E2 wedge E3, which is this plane. So these are new entities that we have created that didn't exist before. Okay. And then we have E1, which E2, which E3. And this is the unit element of volume. Okay. So it will be This one will be E1, which E2, E3. Okay. And then we add also the U number one, which will represent just the points. Okay. So these elements, so these all form the basis of our Grassmann algebra. Okay. This is an element of rank zero which are the scalars. These are elements of rank 1. These are elements of rank 2. And this is one element that we have only one of rank 3. So basically, every possible subspace in R3 can be obtained as a linear combination of this. For instance, every volume will be just a constant times the unit volume. You cannot create any other volume but that, right? But then you have planes. And if you want to create a plane which is oriented like this, it will be a linear combination of this rank 2 vector and this rank 2 vector, okay? And so on. Things become even more weird here, okay? Uh, you can create a, a general multi vector which is a linear combination of everything, okay? This element, so the basis, so the basis. Uh, let me just put it down there if I have space. Yeah, I can st still extend this. Basis of uh, funny things, G with the R3. Grassmann algebra of R3 is going to be 1, E1. E2, E3, E1 wedge E2, E1 wedge E3, E2 wedge E3, E1 wedge E2 wedge E3. So it's uh, an algebra that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's at 8 dimensional. as vector space, you know, it's the basis as vector space. It has eight elements. A general multi-vector, 
in general multi vector let's just call it I don't know V or let's just call it A uh, let me see what notation I use here so that we have it yes A A will be equal to you know coefficient multiplying each of these so it will be A0 for the scalar plus a1, a1, e1, a1, e1, plus a2, e2, plus a3, e3, a4, e1, wedge, e2, a5, e1, wedge, e3, a6, e2, wedge, e3, a7, E1, which E2, which E3. Okay, so this will be a general element of the algebra, a general multi vector. Let's keep, let me give you a little bit more of notation about the names of these things. So this notation, notation, these elements E1, E2, E3 that kind of form the basis, E1, E2, E1, which E3, E2, which E3, these are called blades. So this will be one blades this will be called two blades or you can call them also rank one vector rank one two vectors and so on as we did e2 was e3 this will be three blades well there is only one so three blades okay when you have a linear combination of these but only using one type of blade so the the, the this multi vectors of a particular rank so that will be n vectors so m vector and n vector is a linear combination of n blades linear combination of n blades okay for instance, a two vector, for example, a two vector <coughs> could be V equal to V1, E1 wedge E2 plus V2, E1 wedge E3 plus V3, E2 wedge E3. That will be a two vector. And we know that this is going to be like a plane, right? And then we have the multi-vector, which is a general combination. A linear combination of heterogeneous plates, if we want. Genius plates, and that's a general element that we wrote before. Okay, so this defines our whole algebra. We'll have a whole bunch of elements that we can add together, we can multiply using the, the outer product or wedge product. So the next example will be R4. The underlying vector space will be R4. And we can see a tendency already, so if we had R2, which is a two-dimensional underlying vector space, our Grassmann algebra had dimension four. In R3, okay. as underlying vector space, we had eight, right? So what are we going to have in R4? 16. 16, right. <laughs> what is that? Is uh, two to the... Huh? 
2 to the n. So it creates big algebras, okay? But it's nice anyway. <laughs> All right, so R4. Underlying basis E1, E2, E3, and E4. And now we have to start creating all possible. So one blade, just the vector space. So one blade, E1, E2, E3, E4. Two blades. Now we have to take all possible wedge product of elements of the bases E1 wedge E2 E1 wedge E3 E1 wedge E4 E2 wedge E3 E2 wedge E4 E3 wedge E4 and we know if we switch the order we just get a minus is that all? <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. We can find also a well, let's do one more and then we will find the, the formula, right? We know it's just the combination of the two elements taken from a group of four and then three, right? So three blades, all possible combinations of uh, uh, non-repeated three elements. E2, E3, E1, E2, E4. E2, E3, E4. Am I missing some? Oh. Which one? E1, E3, E4. Oh yeah, I'm missing E1, E2, E4. E1, E2, E4. E1, E3, E4. E2, E3, E4. So we have four. Here we have six, here we have four. And then four blades. There will be only one. E1, E2, E3, E4. And then there won't be anything else because if you try to add more things, whether it's a linear combination or just a basis vector, you will end up having repeated elements, right? So it will be zero. So this gives you a big basis so we have the one we have I don't want to copy it again we have okay let me just instead of putting that let me just put uh, we have one for the scalar plus four for the one blade plus six for this one plus four plus one oh, nice huh? And that is 10, 14, 15, 16. Oh, that's what we should get. Okay, good. 16 basis elements. So we can also derive a, a formula for how many of these we have, right? For each for each type of plate. So two blades you will have, uh, what is that, two over, over n, right? Uh, for K blades, K blades, I hope I, we have K over N, okay. So two over, two over four is, or is N over K, right? N over K. Four over two. So four factorial divided by by 2 times 2, 4. So that's 3 times 2, 6, right? That's good, yeah. N over K. N over K elements. And then in total, you just do the sum. So this will be like the, this is the induction proof, right? And, you know, assuming this is true, the total number of elements of the bases will be sum from k equal 1 to n of n over k and this is equal to 2 to the n. Uh, it's uh, from k equals 0 because we don't want to forget the otherwise it will be 2 to the k equals 0, right? Well, either that or we add 1. So 
So this is more general, even though we are talking about R4, that gives you the number of elements, 2n basis elements. A1, B2, minus A2, B1, uh, E1, wait, E2, E2. No, I don't want a keyboard. Wait, E2, plus A2, B3, minus A3, B2, A2, wait, E3. Plus, and this is the way it's in the notes, uh, so I'm going to write it like this A3 B1 minus A1 B3 A3 wedge E3 wedge E1. And of course, you can select which of this one is your basis vector. You can select E1 wedge E3 or E3 wedge E1. Uh, if we select that, then it goes more in the, you know, one. You know, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, so it kind of follows the, the circle. And if you look at this, these are just the minors, okay? Each of these coefficients are just the 2 by 2 minors, right? A1, A2, B1, B2. A1, B2 minus B1, A2. A2. Two A three B two B three A two B three minus A three B one A two B three and then you have this one with the minus sign A three A one right so I don't know what if let me see if I change the sign here or I just A three A one no, I just put A three A one. And this will be the same as changing the sign A three B one. So these are the minors. Uh, uh, two minors. And if you do A Y A which B which C, actually you just need to do. Uh, let me see. Let me see how it is done here. And I'll do it like right here. So the wedge product of three vectors, we can do it, I guess we have time to do it. Okay, so we need to have this. Let me just write it at least, A1, B2, I know it's annoying, but we need to see it. E1, wedge E2, plus A2, B3, minus A3, B2, E2, wedge E3, plus A3, B1 minus A1, B3, E1 with E3. All this is multiplied with a wedge with a C1. C1, E1 plus C2, E2 plus C3, E3. Okay? So now we'll see every time, you know, E1, when it multiplies this one, it will cancel. Uh, in this one it will stay E1, E2, E3, but in this one there is an E1, so it actually only multiplies one of the three terms every time. So if we do that, so this actually gives let's say, E2, B3, minus E3, B2, C1, that will be this term, let me just put it here, E, E2, 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 E3, 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 and now the C3 with this one. A1, B2, minus A2, B1. A1, which 
e1, wedge e2, wedge e3. Okay. Now let's put all of them with the, this sign, so we will change this, let's see. This one you switch here is one change of sign, which is here is another one, so it will be positive, and in this one it will be a negative there. C3, yes, C3, sorry, C3. Okay, so this is A2, B3, minus A3, B2, C1. This one we said it does change sign, this one, no, this one doesn't change sign, this, that's minus A3, B1, minus A1, B3, C2, plus a1, B2, minus A2, B1, C3, all this E1, which E2, which E3. And if we did our signs correctly, this should be the determinant. Okay, this gives you the volume. Okay. equal to the determinant of A, B, C, E1, wedge, E2, wedge, E3. And if we then, if your signs that don't work, then yes, you can just switch one of the signs of the elements there, okay? A, comma, B, comma, C. So if you were wondering, you know, maybe you did, why, what is this invention of the determinant, you know, when you were studying linear algebra? How did they come with this funny way of operating things to get a number, right? So this is where it comes from. Right? It's just measuring your volume, you know, using your, your outer product. And, you know, there is a lot of formulas uh, here to calculate volumes based on that, and you will see uh, those in the notes. There are also some, some examples. So basically, if you, if you want to give kind of a geometric interpretation to this, you know, you can imagine that you have these three vectors, A, B, and C, you know, when you do the wedge product of them, you are calculating the volume they are generating. Um, and the volume they are generating, man, this is, I don't know, no, it's not like that. <laughs> anyway, the volume they are generating, whatever it is, it will be a multiple times our basis element volume, which is this one. And that is given by, by the determinant, by this calculation here, right? So it will be just a constant times our volume element. So you can think of the wedge product as, as something that, um, you know, it's kind of a um, union, okay? The equivalent will be a union. The union of two lines will give you a, a plane. The union of three lines will give you, in general, if they are linearly independent, a volume. Okay? So that's kind of like, I don't want to <laughs> appear in video saying this, but <laughs> it's kind of, you know, creating new things, you know, joining. Okay. Uh, it also gives you the information of when two things are linearly dependent. For instance, if you try to do the wedge, product of two lines that are parallel, it will give you zero because you are not generating a, a surface with them, okay? If you try to do the, a volume with, you know, this line and then this one and then another one that is parallel to this one, you know, it will give you zero because you don't generate a volume. It will still be a plane, okay? There is another, well, there are many other operators you can generate, or you can define on the Grassmann algebra, and we'll see maybe one or two if I have time to prepare the notes. Uh, the Grassmann algebra by itself is, doesn't need any other operation, but you can you can put more geometric meaning into it, okay. But because I don't have more notes prepared, we'll leave it here for today, and uh, hopefully I will have more notes and also some mathematical examples to work so that we can work with them. Okay?